What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with the next video in my Hackintosh hardware series. Today we'll be looking at the B75MITX motherboard from ASRock. Getting right into it, let's talk about the features of this motherboard. This board features the B75 chipset, which isn't as common as some others. It doesn't allow for any overclocking, but it runs OS X fairly well. The 1155 CPU socket is present, which is a definite plus. This is the most up-to-date socket that's fully compatible with OS X, including power management. This board can use Core i3, i5, and i7 processors, but as I said earlier, they cannot be overclocked with this board. This board uses the ALC892 audio chipset. Audio on this board will work great after selecting the appropriate kext for Multibeast. Like just about any other ITX motherboard, we have a single PCI Express slot, and this one happens to be a 3.0. I'll get a little more into this in a bit, but I had to fill the slot with a GPU to achieve full functionality. There are four SATA ports on this board, three of them SATA 2, and one is SATA 3. There's even a USB 3 header for some external USB 3.0 ports. We're given two DDR3 memory slots to work with, which can hold a maximum of 16GB of RAM. For the rear I.O., we have two USB 2.0 ports, a PS2 port, VGA, DVI, and HDMI out, two more USB 2.0 ports, an eSATA port, a standard RJ45 Ethernet connector, two USB 3.0 ports, and the typical onboard audio outputs. The good news regarding this rear I.O. is that the Ethernet and audio connections worked very well. The Ethernet works after using the Lynx to Mac Kex for Multibeast, as it's a Realtek 8100 series chipset. As I stated earlier, the audio works great after installing the ALC892 Kext. The bad news is that the rest of the I.O. didn't work out quite as well. I had some problems with the USB and display outputs. In terms of the USB ports, I found that USB 2.0 devices will only mount in the USB 2.0 ports. On the other hand, USB 3.0 devices seem to work just fine in both 2.0 and 3.0 ports. The problem I experienced is that the system would occasionally freeze up when plugging in any type of USB device into any type of port. Whenever this happened, I was forced to hold the power button on my system and restart. I'm not sure whether this is a problem of my board specifically, but either way, not cool. I also had some trouble with both the DVI and the HDMI outputs. Whenever booting the system with graphics enablers set to yes, I would get a fun looking screen like this. I tried manually setting my graphics mode to 1920x1080 unplugging the cable, and even three different bootloaders. Nothing could make the HD 4000 outputs work. This is why I needed to fill that PCI Express slot with a GPU. While I had the GPU in the system, I even tried using one output from each GPU. Still no luck. When booting into the Unibeast drive, or just booting with graphics enablers set to no, I could get into the operating system just fine, but obviously I didn't have very good graphics performance. In order to get native power management for this board, you'll need to flash a custom BIOS, which I have linked below in the description. To install the BIOS, simply copy the downloaded BIOS file to any FAT32 flash drive. From there, boot into the BIOS by hitting the delete key on startup. Once in the BIOS, navigate to the advanced menu and arrow down to instant flash. From there, just hit enter over the BIOS file it finds and let it do its thing. Now that I've told you guys everything you need to know about this board, would I recommend this board for your Hackintosh? Keeping a long story short, I'm gonna have to say no. The lack of integrated graphics may not be a big deal if you plan to use a GPU anyway, but just keep in mind that this won't allow you to use any other PCI accessories. The USB freezing problem also bothers me as I'm constantly plugging USB devices in and out of my machine. I just need to know that the system won't lock up on me. Also, the need to flash your BIOS for native power management isn't the optimal solution as there's always some risk involved when flashing your BIOS. Besides those three things, I have to say that the system performed pretty well, just not well enough to recommend for a Hackintosh. There are simply other boards out there that are more compatible and cost the same amount. So now you guys know what I think about the ASRock B75M ITX motherboard. Tell me what you guys think down below in the comments. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here soon.